You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. The Royal Court has announced that President Nikos Anastasidis, President of the Friendly Republic of Cyprus, will arrive tomorrow, Sunday, the 12th of September, on a visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain, during which he will hold talks with His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa, dealing with relations between the two friendly countries, in addition to developments on the regional and international arenas. The Royal Court wished the country's guest and his accompanying delegation a pleasant stay in the Kingdom. The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil Hamedan, said that rehab and vocational centers and institutions will open tomorrow, Sunday, from the start of the new school year 2021-2022. Hamedan said that all preparations had been taken to accommodate 109 students with physical disabilities. Efforts are also being stepped up to implement mandatory precautionary measures at the ministry-run centers and institutions, taking into account the COVID-19 alert traffic light system to protect students and employees' health and safety. The ministry-run centers and institutions included children daycare centers, NBB Rehab Center, BBK Rehab Center, and Sheikhan Al Farsi Center for Total Communication. The ministry said that parents have the option to choose either in person attendance or remote learning for their children at all levels of the COVID 19 alert traffic light system, taking into account the capacity of the centers. In the presence of the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Wa'al Limbarak, and the CEO of the Electricity and Water Authority, Sheikh Nawaf bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, the authority launched a service for the elderly and people with special needs. The service aims to facilitate the procedures for subscribers' requests who meet the conditions as they are visited at their homes to receive and release their requests without the need to visit the subscriber's service center, and the authority will meet all their needs starting from receiving the requests until paying the insurance or bills. Subscribers from the age of 60 and above and people of special needs can obtain the service by booking an appointment through through Skip Lino or by contacting the authorities call center. Within the framework of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's directives, the Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, Dr. Mustafa Sayyid Al Amin, announced the arrival of the third shipment of relief aid to Afghanistan. On this occasion, Dr. Sayyid extended sincere thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his directives to deliver aid to the Afghani people, praising the kind support enjoyed by the RHF from the government led by His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He also paid tribute to His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa for leading the RHF's humanitarian work. As Sayyid indicated that the third shipment contained necessary medical relief and food materials to alleviate the suffering of the brotherly Afghani people during the current period. The Prisoners and Detainees' Rights Commission has praised the issuance of Decree Law 24 of 2021 by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa amending Article 13 of Law 18 of 2007 on alternative penalties and measures. The Prisoners and Detainees' Rights Commission has praised the issuance of Decree Law 24 for 2021 by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa amending Article 13 of Law 18 of 2017 on alternative penalties and measures. The Commission described the move as a new achievement added to the track record of accomplishments made in rehabbing the inmates and re integrating them into the community. It added that the step is part of the pioneering initiatives taken by the Kingdom of Bahrain to promote human rights at all levels. The Commission also lauded the practical procedures undertaken by the relevant parties concerning the alternative penalties, including mainly the public prosecution. It also commended the efforts of the independent national institutions in supporting enforcement of the alternative procedures. International human rights organizations said that the laws passed in late July 2021 to organize the first legislative elections in Qatar will effectively prevent thousands of Qataris from voting or running for elections and highlighting the discriminatory Qatari nationality laws. The organization said that the new electoral system prevents Qataris, whom the controversial citizenship law classifies as naturalized, from running in the elections for two-thirds of the Shura Council seats. They added that this law deprived many Qataris of full citizenship rights and that the election law confirms that not all Qataris have equal rights noting that the law shows widespread violations of human rights in Qatar. Qataris criticized the absence of the Qatari media and Al Jazeera TV from highlighting their demands, which affected a large segment of citizens, pointing out that Al Jazeera channel turned a blind eye to all of these violations. Marking their official visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain, the Ministry of Housing has hosted a delegation of U.S. Congress staff to brief them about the East Head Housing Project, including its infrastructure, constructed houses, waterfront and lanes to practice various hobbies. The U.S. Congress delegation aims to strengthen joint cooperation between the two countries and collect first-hand information about the development projects witnessed by the Kingdom during His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's prosperous era. The delegation was introduced to Bahrain's modern towns and the services accompanying them. It also visited several completed units and facilities. 
members of the visiting delegation expressed their admiration for the kingdom's housing march and the importance attached by the government to housing since the 1960s, affirming that Bahrain boasts a pioneering experience in providing decent housing for the citizens, which deserves to be praised. They lauded the housing projects provided for various segments, praising the efforts exerted by the housing ministry through its partnership with the private sector and expressed their admiration for the progress made in the five new towns. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,155,065 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,096,079 had taken the second, and 266,527 had taken the booster dose. The ministry renewed its calls for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccine. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 939 with 88 recoveries and 88 registered new cases and no new deaths. 42 of the new registered cases were expatriates, 27 were contacts of active cases and 19 were travel related. The ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.